So I've been using ChatGPT for the past two months and uh, I'm a software programmer and uh, now every day 80% of my work uh, in terms of coding is all generated code by ChatGPT. And so what is ChatGPT and why it shocked the world? So ChatGPT is a conversational AI that is capable of carrying out an intelligent conversation with a human. So you can think of this as almost like the scene from Iron Man in the Marvel movies where the Iron Man... Blood toxicity, 24%. It appears that the continued use of the Iron Man suit is accelerating your condition. Where the Iron Man goes, hey Jarvis, I need to build this and this. Can you run some diagnostics on, on this and this? And Jarvis goes like after two seconds, and then it's like, here's the results. And they collectively work together in a conversation and then they build this thing together, right? So uh, that means AI is now able to have like intelligent, like human-like conversations with other, another human. So AI research has itself has been around for almost like 80 years. So it's a pretty old uh, field, but the conversational, and also during this time, everybody tried to crack this conversational AI and everybody failed. It, it turned out to be incredibly diff uh, difficult task to do. And um, the, the reasons why this is difficult is our natural language, like English, you know, I speak Korean. Um, I mean, whatever, whatever other languages you speak, they're not precise language. So when ChatGPT was able to carry on such a conversation, and in some cases for certain topics, it could do so better than humans, uh, it really gave a lot of feelings inside, emotions inside um, the humans. Um, like things like um, they're, they're, they feel amazed at this, excited and scared. And these emotions, uh, you can get a better kind of control of them once you get to know the limitations of what ChatGPT is capable of and not capable of. Because you know, so how did the AI scientists crack this conversational AI? So the it turns out the only animal right that can do this massive you know uh, processing of natural language and having a conversation is humans. Really, we're the only animals that can do this on on planet Earth. So scientists decided to. Uh, basically say, right, so if we can't manually model this with math mathematics, let's literally just take a look at how our brain works and then simulate that in computer and let's see what happens. So, so one of the most successful AI case that really AI became a thing is image recognition. Um, and this is where we started seeing the importance of using neural networks. What the scientists did basically is they had a set of images, thousands and thousands of images of dogs, birds, and cats. Okay. And then what they want to see is basically when they present this picture of a bird and then they kind of convert it into electrical signals into the initial input layer where they have, in this case, it's a very small neural network, but this is just to kind of demonstrate to you what it, what it would look like. But in reality, in order to understand a, an image like this, you would have like thousands and uh, hundreds of, um, uh, you could potentially have hundreds of neurons. I don't know, maybe this many neurons is good enough to um, decipher dog, bird, cat, I'm not sure, whatever. You've got an input layer, and then they will all decide to light up and activate, and then pass on signals to the next layer, and then they would also decide to pass on signals to the next layer, next layer, and then at the end, because as humans, we're interested in only three types of answers. Dog, just tell me either this is a dog, bird, or cat. So we've got three neurons at the end, and then the question is, what kind of signals, given the input image, what kind of signals do we get for a neuron that's responsible for an answer for the dog or the bird or the cat? And hopefully, our hope is that given the image of a bird, we get a very strong signal coming out of this neuron that's responsible for bird. And then we get So then we can safely say as a human being, okay, this AI, tell me what this is. And then, oh, it's a bird, right? So what is a training of an AI? We hear this all the time that people talk about, like ChatGPT had to be trained. You basically um, tell the neural networks uh, that was not the right answer. So you need to change your activation behavior a little bit. So uh, they will all change their activation behavior and then you will feed in the images again and then test like, are, is it, are you giving the right answer or not? And then you just keep on doing that over and over until they begin to more or less start to give the right answer at the end. 
So that's what it means to be training. You really have to just start with a random set of neural network and connections and activations, and then you just keep on reiterating and telling it you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong until oh you start you, you you start to get the answer right. Okay, do more of that, do more of that, and then it will just eventually the activations and connections are the smarts inside of an AI. Here from here. So now then, how did ChatGPT come about? Right. It's very similar to how humans go through learning. So human babies. They learn to speak the language even before they go through formal education in school. So you can see babies at seven years old, eight years old. They they start start talking to their mom and dad, uh, but they do it in a very um, unprofessional way, that like uneducated way, like very rudimentary. But they can still communicate. But how are they doing that? It's not like mom and father are sitting there teaching grammar to the kid. Mom and dad just kind of speak to them. Their uncle, aunt, whatever other human beings all speak to that baby, and they all talk about. Different things to the baby. Sometimes they're talking about the TV show. Sometimes they're talking about like buying a chocolate from a supermarket. Whatever, whatever the topics may be, the human baby is kind of sitting there and just receiving all these information from different hum other adults, and then they start to find patterns in their brain, and that's their com complex neurons here. What you see, um, forming connections with other neurons, and then if that was a mistake, they would dis disconnect it, and then they would form it with another neurons, and then also they would change the activation behavior. Right, so all of that development is happening inside of the the baby's brain, but it's completely unsupervised. Nobody is guiding uh, the kid what is right and what is wrong. The baby is just kind of taking it all in, and then speak out to test um, uh, the baby's current current baby's uh, brain state. And then if the if the feedback from the uh, adults are not what they expect, then they would just feel stressed, and that causes the brains to like disconnect with the current connections of the neurons, and then reorganize itself, and then test it out again in the real world. And that process repeats over and over, just like how the scientists are training a, what seems to be a very random simulated neural network, and then they keep on training that. Baby is doing the same thing, and then uh, the actual response uh, generating part, where the human judges are involved, uh, that takes about six months. Just working, humans. I guess I guess the humans work nine to five in that case, right? They have set because humans get tired, right? And then that takes about six months. So. So let's compare ChatGPT and humans. Now that we understand what actually is uh, involved in in simulating our brain and creating this uh, artificial AI intelligence, we can start to see the limitations and uh, what is good at and what is not good at. Humans need to spend about 25 years to have fully developed brain, right? The neurons are always changing in uh, in our human body, even after it's fully developed. We are constantly um, having these minor tweaks. So it's very fluid. Our neurons uh, disconnect and connect and change its activation behaviors, and like it, it always changes every second we live. Um, and our neurons are completely autonomous and super energy efficient. What it means is, it decide each every single individual neurons decide to make changes, necessary changes uh, to itself by itself without any kind of a governing body. It will get external stimulus. Some kind of signal will come, and it will be like, oh, I should disconnect this one now. Uh, but ChatGPT, on the other hand, it takes 1.5 years to be trained and released as a version, which is like a um, upper hand compared to human. Human has to spend 25 years. Um, AI right now, ChatGPT, 1.5 years is going to get faster and faster. But for now, it's 1.5 years. If you compare 1.5 years to 25 years, of course, you, you just want to spend 1.5 years. And ChatGPT doesn't change its neural network once it's built, unlike human beings' real brains. And ChatGPT, of course, um, you've seen these days, a lot of people are using it and the website is constantly down or slow. That means it requires massive amounts of electricity to run these servers and it requires um, a lot of GPUs to train the neural networks. And all these things eats up a lot of energy at the moment. So, yeah, so that's basically it. So, as humans, having these brains of our ours as as the hardware what's under the hood we have clear advantage we we are we can be autonomous uh, independent intelligent intelligent beings uh, that doesn't have to be hooked up to a massive server 
w w you can throw somebody into a deserted um, island and that person will figure his way out uh, using his intelligence to survive, make decisions, face problems, solve problems on a remote location without being connected to anything else. And uh, hopefully um, this video can encourage some people who thought ChatGPT, like some, some I don't know, some young computer scientists out there who, who genuinely got excited about ChatGPT and then started researching about ChatGPT and overwhelmed by these scientific papers and mathematics and all this. Hopefully this video really made it simple uh, and then encouraged some young people to kind of take the next step from this presentation to start learning about all the bits and pieces that I explained at the high level, go deeper, learn the math, um, and all the things related to neural networks and you know make our lives better with AI. Thanks.